Okay, so your old beater computer is starting to break down and you're looking to upgrade. Or, you're Ableton curious and you want to get into music production and you're not sure which computer is the best. Also, if you want to know how to get 40% off Ableton software, this is your video, homie. Hey friends, in this video I'm going to answer one of the most prominent questions I see consistently across the internet, and that is, which kind of computer should I buy for Ableton Live? Mac or PC? Laptop or tower? After all these years using PC and Mac in studios and on stage, I think I can answer this question with accuracy and really get you set up for success. So I want to start with the Mac versus PC battle. Taking on this age-old debate is sort of the equivalent of posting the just start arguing in the comments meme, and I'm sure the comments section under this video is going to get heated. It always does bust out your popcorn. But the difference here is that we're coming at this battle in 2021 as musicians who need fast, reliable technology to grind out daily work with. So before you start blathering off why your Mac or your PC is superior, let's just try to stick to the context. One of the ways that I've compared Mac and PC in the past is with a fun little analogy comparing them to cars. Traditionally, I've said that Mac computers are kind of like Toyota Priuses. They're extremely reliable, they'll run forever, but they don't go super fast and they don't have many upgrades that you can do to them. And they tend to cost a bit more. PC, on the other hand, is like a Frankenstein souped up Ford Mustang GT. Loads of custom parts and loads faster than the Mac Prius, but it ends up in the shop about five times as much and needs constant servicing. But if and when the Mac Prius needs servicing, it's going to cost more, but it's going to be rare. Meanwhile, the Mustang PC, see what I did there, will be in the shop a lot more, but the parts are cheaper and easier to get. And really, this has been my personal experience. I've owned and still do Macs and PCs with Ableton on both. I've toured with both, and the analogy rings true. My Macs reliably run my set night after night, going years and years before any servicing needs to be done. Meanwhile, the PC will kick ass until it doesn't. And when it doesn't, it really doesn't. And this is why I say if you are a super tech savvy person who works in IT departments, traditionally, I would say that PC would be your go-to platform for Ableton because truly it will save you money and you'll be able to upgrade it as much as your hardware will allow. But this is a diminishingly small percentage of Ableton users. Now there's going to be a couple asshats in the comments who are going to say, I've toured with my PC and I've never had issues ever. Well, first of all, you're lying. You've at least had some driver issues and lengthy setup times, if not full-on failures that took your computer out of commission until you were able to solve the issue. There's a reason that there are so many videos out there on optimizing Windows for music production. That's because out of the box, unless you built the machine yourself, you need to adjust a lot of the settings to orient your PC around handling audio efficiently. For you PC users out there who haven't done that yet, I highly recommend it as the MCI PC that I bought for video editing could barely run Ableton Live until I optimized it for audio. It's a thing. Do yourself a favor and Google search optimizing Windows for audio. Now meanwhile, this is the computer that I lovingly like to call the Millennium Falcon. This is a maxed out 2012 MacBook Pro with 16 gigs of RAM. I'm still finishing music on it that has yet to be released 10 years after I bought it. This computer has performed at at least a thousand shows and I bought it refurbished. Pro tip, buy refurbished computers. They're cheaper, they're better for the environment, and if you buy them from Apple's website, chances are they're not gonna wanna have the same computer come back twice to the shop. In fact, I bet they pay special attention to newer computers that need servicing right away and do a bang up job so that they never have to service that computer again. All my Macs have been refurbished and I've never had a problem outside your classic normal problems. Now, the Millennium Falcon MacBook Pro is not nearly as fast as this PC, but it's only given me issues three times on stage and every time it's been due to heat. All Intel Macs run hot, it's just a fact. This leads me to my next point to consider. Now, without going too deeply into chipset technology, one of the main factors for how fast a computer can run is its ability to manage its own temperature. Folks who have giant studio tower computers scoff at laptop users because their towers can run so fast. But traditionally, these computers also have had to have big time cooling technology to keep up with the temperatures that they generate. And I'm sorry, but nothing sucks more than a loud fan blasting into your mic when you're trying to record. Go back to my videos last year and you can definitely hear my Millennium Falcon and the MCI PC fans chugging away in my videos. It's really lame. So really, leading up until now, one could make a pretty good argument that there are strengths and weaknesses 50-50 to PC and Mac computers running Ableton. And it's more the kind of person that you are and what you're trying to do with the machine that determines which one that you should get. 
But the reason I keep saying the word traditionally is that Apple, love them or hate them, have really changed the game with their new silicon technology. Again, without going too deep into the tech itself, the chips that Apple is manufacturing for themselves, the M1, the M1 Pro, and the M1 Max, are giant leaps forward in temperature management. So this brings me to the third computer, this little lightsaber. This is my Mac M1 Air. This tiny computer, when testing the same Ableton set at the moment, is about four times faster than the Millennium Falcon and three times faster than the MCI PC. And take a listen to the fan. I'm just screwing with you. There's actually no fan. That's right, this little computer makes zero noise. That's because the M1 chip is so efficient at heat dispersion that it doesn't even need a fan, so Apple left it out. Now, some genius is going to get in the comments and say some noise about it's going to throttle when you put it to the test. But remember, we're talking about music work here, okay? Thus far, I've worked on Ableton sets with over a hundred tracks and with hundreds of instances of CPU-heavy plugins, and it blasts my other computers out of the water. Now, the next comment that I will Batman slap out of the way is, wait, I thought Ableton 11 isn't ready for silicon computers. Well, this leads me to the next thing and why I'm putting this video out right now. Ableton has just released a public beta of their new silicon native version of Ableton 11. Before this beta, I thought, wow, this little computer is really fast. But now it's at a whole nother level. I'm able to run multiple instances of FabFilter Saturn with oversampling turned all the way up. Another thing that I did is I made an instrument rack with 100 wavetable instances. Now, this rumor about 11 likely persisted because of an issue with Ableton drum rack that they recently fixed. In fact, here's the difference that this little update made in my giant Papadocio live set. 40% CPU versus 3%. Unbelievable. So Ableton 11 is very much ready for the M1 computers and it's only gonna get better. Now, before you say, hey, I thought Ableton 11 takes more CPU than Ableton 10. And yeah, that's true, but just a tiny bit more. But now with all these updates, 11 is running almost as efficiently as Ableton 10 on all three of my computers, and we get those oh-so-sweet new features that really make Ableton 11 a one-stop shop for all things music production, like comping, the new macro snapshots, hybrid reverb, and more. Look, new stuff takes more processing. It's called Ableton, after all, not Disableton. It's not like they're going to go backwards. With any advancement in technology on the software end, the hardware also needs to be occasionally upgraded. Like, imagine if Grand Theft Auto never made sequels to their games that required more CPU to run. <laughs> We'd be stuck playing an overhead view and never get the up-close satisfaction from randomly punching people on the street. Now, real quick before I get too far, if you're wanting to dive into Ableton Live and haven't done so yet, or you're naughty and you're using a cracked version of Ableton, let me toot my horn real quick. The Ableton overlords have seen me and my ultra in-depth online courses for learning Ableton Live and found them to be worthy of the sought after educational discount, which is a whopping 40% off of any version of Ableton Live, standard or sweet. So if you want to get two birds stoned at once while getting a killer deal on Ableton Live, but also want to get the most thorough education on Ableton Live available on the internet, Click this link here or in the description and join me and a whole army of amazing music producers in our community discord. Okay, so let's get to my conclusion. So I know I've been a little bit wordy leading up to this, but here is my official recommendation for this moment in time as a musician using Ableton Live. The best possible computer for Ableton Live at the moment is definitely a Silicon M1 Mac, and my reasons are this. One, since Apple is manufacturing their own chips, the whole PC has better bang for the buck argument is kind of dead in the water. This maxed out M1 Air cost me $1,800 and I still haven't hit the max CPU limit in any of my sets. And now with the silicon native version of Ableton, I'd have to seriously try to hit the max limit. Most of you would do just fine with the standard M1 Mac Air, which is only $900. Then number two, at the time of this video, Ableton is almost finished with their silicon native version of Ableton Live because it's in public beta. So those of us who have these silicon computers can now take full advantage of their processors. And then number three, these processors are so fast and small that you'll likely no longer need to make a choice between having a laptop or a tower. At the end of the day, audio is audio, and yeah, there'll be leaps in technology, but most all of you, likely 95% of you, could do all the work you'd ever need to do with a tiny little M1 laptop. So even if you never intend on touring, why limit your portability? Everyone likes making beats in the great outdoors. Now, of course, there are some limitations to this little air that really irk me, the main one being the lack of ports. There are only two USB ports and a headphone jack, but at the same time, you can pass through power this thing and connect it to literally everything in your studio with one cable coming out of a dock like this Anchor one that I use. But gripes aside, I could not in good conscience recommend another computer to anyone at this point in time because the value proposition is just so undeniable. For now, and that's a big for now. 
The real reason why you're probably going to see so many angry comments at the bottom of this video is that when making big financial choices, folks tend to create an identity around those big purchases. They claim to be a PC user or a Mac user as if that should be on their name tag. But there's truly no reason to be a loyalist to anything. At this moment in time, I imagine a lot of PC users are leaving PC in favor of the undeniably fast and more affordable Silicon Mac platform. But that's not to say that Apple won't get lazy, and Intel won't design a smaller and faster chip, and eventually be the go-to platform in the future. Your ability to remain agile and be able to pivot to the better platform is really where it's at. Now, Apple didn't sponsor this video, and to be honest, I find Apple's behavior as a company to be pretty cringy most of the time. In short, I'm no fanboy, but they just happen to be offering the best computer for the job at the moment. It is what it is. So, I hope this video was helpful to you, and if Ableton is your thing, it's my thing too, so make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. Thanks so much for watching, everybody. I'll see you in the next video.